2012? That's a great question. Um, expanding it, right? I mean, it, the as I say, this has been a month. This will be a month. What day is today? Thursday. In in two days, this will have been a month. Okay, it, it's, it occupies column inches in every paper there is, and segments on every news hour. It's been a month, and it's, <laughs> there, there are, you know, like 1,500 occupations across the world. I saw there's an Occupy Pyongyang. <laughs> Those guys are going to wish they had police brutality like we have in New York. Uh, that's, a, that's a ballsy move, <laughs> occupying Pyongyang. So, so um, the way that we do that is expanding, and... Um, uh, and um, making sure that we stand in solidarity with one another and making sure that we're not easily bought off and co-opted. So there's a lot of groups right now, the Democratic Party, chief among them, and their subsidiaries, moveon.org and these kind of things, who are putting out all sorts of statements and, you know, uh, you know, what it, uh, I cannot think right now, I'm so tired, I apologize. <laughs> Petitions and all sorts of things saying, you know, we stand with Occupy Wall Street, Occupy Wall Street's after this, and then they just articulate whatever their pre-existing agenda <laughs> already was, you know, and say, well, now this is happening, and so that's, of course, our agenda. We have to not be co-opted, and we have to make sure that the winning thing that will sustain this movement is the 99% meme. That is the winning thing. And the occupation of space. If we allow it to become about Glenn Beck or you know, Islamo-fascism or whatever it is, we lose. By focusing on the 99%, we win, and that, and, and the, the, the problems aren't going away, uh, unfortunately, but I guess fortunately in the interest of sustaining the movement, right? The problems are getting worse, and they're going to continue getting worse, and if we focus on the 99%, that's how we'll win, to the extent that we can. So you were in Wall Street, you were in Wall Street. Can you kind of explain to us what the significance of occupying is like you just said occupying space and I think a lot of us are kind of drawn to the idea of what it means to occupy. Yeah, it's it's um that's critical. I mean people have written about liberating space from an empire for a long time. Mercuse wrote about that and the Black Panthers did that a lot in the in the late sixties and early seventies. They just claimed space within the empire as liberated and free. Um, and uh, in, in Liberty Plaza Park, as I say, they've set up uh, essentially a democratic society um, where it, if you were four feet that way on the sidewalk of Broadway, if you were sick and dying, they would let you. But if you walk in four feet this way into the park, you're among people who are committed constitutionally to your well-being and to making sure that... So, so by setting up model societies of the, the way that we want things to be, in space, especially in space that's in the belly of the beast, right? Occupy Chicago's got the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. Um, Occupy New Orleans took City Hall. Um, but by, by being right in, we actually we had a, a march on the Upper East Side, which is the, the neighborhood of, in Manhattan where the 1% lives. Rupert Murdoch and Lloyd Blankfein and, and David Koch and those kind of people. Um, by, by taking the space where these people work and live, and, and ensuring that they hear our voices and that we're loud and obnoxious and disrupt business as usual um, and, and liberating space, uh, that's a critical thing. And it also allows that one part of the thing is people holding space and the other part of the thing is everybody else doing stuff, writing articles and, and forming organizations and forming solidarity stuff and having marches and reaching out to labor unions and whatever other, you know, the ACLU and stuff like that. Um, but that, that, that occupying the space is, um, is a critical importance. <coughs> Uh, nobody has suffered more from the justice system than African Americans. Has the Occupy movement reached out to African American groups? Yeah, considerably. I, the, 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 the group at Liberty Plaza Park is this um, sort of marvelous, magnificent rainbow in a way that the left hasn't really been. I mean, the, the, the myth is that it's all these, like, I, I say this. With, with some irony, uh, all these like white middle class like, hipster hippies. Uh, it, it, it doesn't escape me, but um, uh, but it's been quite good at that. And, and there's a there are considerable um, communities of color in the park, and um, the the organizations that support us include. Um, 
the Hospital Workers Union, 1199 CIU, which is the, the biggest local union in the world, 350,000 members from Florida to Massachusetts, which is primarily West Indian and, and Latin American immigrants, um, home care workers, health care workers. Um, and so the, the institutions that have come out in support of us, the hip-hop community has been very good about coming out and, and doing little impromptu performances. Um, that those have been very good in, in generating. There's a, a movement now called Occupy the Hood, which is um, a, an attempt to uh, to increase that. And I would like for Occupy the Hood to turn into what it sounds like: occupations in the ghettos. That's that is because uh, you know the, the as much as we fret and, and moan about 9.1 percent unemployment, which is probably something like 20 percent unemployment in real terms, it's like double that for Black and Latin communities, um, which is a critical thing to keep track of. I think you'd be hard pressed to find someone here that's not the 54 percent that agrees that the system's unjust and unequal. But if you're just rabble rousing and getting lots of people annoyed and frustrated, there's not a lot of concrete resolution or results that come from this other than we have all this power and it's still really vague. We don't know what we're doing with it. We said 54 percent of the country in a month, um, so they clearly can't really understand what the movement is aiming towards, right. and at the same time when there's all this, you know, purchasing of bulk goods and services for, you know, free food and, and, and lodging and beds and all this stuff, we're still paying the corporations to get these bulk pricings and everything. So how are we really disrupting business as usual when we're on some level increasing the, you know, capitalization <coughs> on our market share? Totally right. Um, yeah, the, the w Wall Street is everything, right? They own the one percent owns everything. They own it all. They're, they're, it's very difficult to. I mean, r raise your hand if you're not wearing something that was made in a sweatshop in a in a rape dungeon in 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 China. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's it, the the capitalist system. That's why I use the steamroller metaphor because it rolls over everybody except for the people who are driving the thing. Um, so. The, the, the goal isn't to like remove ourselves from society, unless you're like Thoreau or something, and you're just like, I'm going to make a dress out of, of grass, and live, you know, <laughs> like, there's no way to do it, it except for um, agitating and agitating and making the people in power. So the, 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 the issue of like goals and demands, a lot of people have made a lot of hay of this, how, you know, like you guys don't have demands. But it's not actually our job to come up with demands. Yeah. It's their job. And if they'd been doing it all along, we would never have gotten this pissed. So what we have to do is make a lot of noise and make them go, ah, how do we get you to stop? You're like invading our lives. How do we get you to stop? And we go, I don't know. <laughs> Try it out. See, make some changes. If we're still here, your changes were insufficient. What's that? Doesn't that still leave the power in their hands? Um, it, it's there, there is a power structure in the United States. I don't think that people on Occupy Wall Street think that we're going to convene a new constitutional convention and remake the republic. Um, but a, as I say, the goal isn't the, the, the goal is making sure that the people in power are responsive to us by making sure that they're intimidated by us. Can I add something to that? Um, and it's also for I don't know here. I know I'm supposed to be up here in a few minutes, so I'm totally jumping in. But to address that too is um, I'm part of the Occupy Tacoma movement and part of at least, we, we all have different, we're all banning with Occupy Wall Street. We're all staying solidarity with them. Um, on a personal level, I'm working on like work group committees and stuff for the local community involving things such as learning what do we have local, what can we support locally to keep the jobs here, to buy clothing and whatnot from the resources that we have locally. And also reaching out, like we have all sorts of, like in the hilltops, they have all sorts of like urban gardens and all sorts of projects. And I personally am in for the long haul trying to connect with everybody and seeing what's local. I'm, I'm a midwifery student. I'm very passionate about women's health, about nutrition, holistic, everything. And I'm really trying to work within our community to see what we have to get our resources and just to kind of connect, unite the community and other communities locally. Um, and if anybody else here in a minute wants to, like, I would like to connect with you too because I know you have some good ideas um, about things like that. I have one more question for Jessica. Yeah. Um, as students on the East Coast without the ability to fly out west to, or out east to New York, um, we can donate, we can send donations, is that correct? Or is there an address that we can send, like money or tarps or... There are definitely, there is an address. If you go to OccupyWallStreet.org, you could, there's you can find ways. I, I would urge you not to do that. Um, 
because we're really well provided for. Like, we, we ha part of the function of having captured the imagination of the country is that, like, we have hell of food. <laughs> like, we got so much food and tarps and, and medical supplies. Like, the, the haul that we bring in from the UPS store every day is, it's, it's, uh, it's Christmas morning. Um, and, and, uh, and so, like, that, that's, we, we're, we do not want for stuff. Um, much more important is to look at the occupations in the country, right? We, this has to be a completely decentralized movement. There's, there's so much focus on us because we're in Wall Street and we were the first ones, but we, like, we don't want that, that attention. They, they've had arrests in Seattle. They've had arrests in Boston. They had arrests in Chicago. I mean, it, it's all over the place. And the, what I would say is try and focus resources on uh, places like Tacoma um, because they... Yeah, like, you, you can get a bunch of, like, anarchists in, like, New York and Chicago and, like, St. Louis to get out and, like, raise a bunch of hell. But, like, when Tacoma and, like, you know, Wichita and, like, you know, Abilene, Texas, like, when those places turn against the, the plutocrats, uh, that's when they go, oh, God, yeah, we, we, we better make some changes right now. So, yeah, fo focus, like really foster this movement, and that's, I'm trying to, OccupyTogether.org is the website that has a sort of omnibus list of all of the different occupations going on around the world. I'm trying to get them to set up some way of having a list of, of the needs of the occupiers in all the different places, and a, like a, a, a pool of funds that can be, that can like um, direct aid where it's most needed. So are you not looking for... Um, to create structural changes within the system, within the political system, like maybe adding, making it a three-party system or something like that. Are you, it doesn't seem like you're looking for that. It seems like it's more trying to change the priorities of, of lawmakers. Would you say that's true? It's difficult to answer that question because I don't speak for anybody except for myself. Right. And nobody does. Personally. Uh, me personally, I want to completely abolish the system and replace it with something much more valuable. <laughs> there you go. Um, but that, you know, I, I'm, I'm a, a, like, I'm super radical. So, like, I, I, I don't expect that everybody's going to be that radical. Um, there are great things to be done in the system, rolling back the effects of Citizens United and having a much more steeply progressive tax code and all these kind of things and making it so that um, the tax code isn't gameable and, and doing away with the philosophically absurd notions of corporate personhood and, and um, political donation is free speech. All these kind of things are very, very good. There are great people who are doing stuff. Eric Schneiderman, the AG in New York, is, is um, investigating banks and holding them to account for their, their fraudulent mortgage practices. Like, there's, there's stuff to be done in the system, um, and I, I think that that's probably the, the most realistic chance that we have of changing things, is by, like, putting pressure on the people in charge to change, given the system that we already have. Okay, I'm going to cut off questions there.